Hello everyone, welcome back to a new tutorial, woohoo, and happy new year. Today I wanted to show you uh, different ways that you can retime your animation. This is if you've had some feedback from your boss or your client, but you have already made a full scene and the note is that they just want the timing changed. This can cause a lot of panic because lots of things can be animated, uh, lots of different layers can be involved, and sometimes my students get stuck on this a little bit as well. So I just wanted to show you how I would do this. So I have a scene here open and ready to go. Um, it's animated. Brian, tell me what to do. And we're going to tell pretend to for the purposes do. of this video Brian, that my client to has told me that they need the audio to start 10 frames later. They've done a new edit and so help them. It's 10 frames out of time. Okay, I say. So the first thing I need to be able to do is to move the audio of 10 frames just for the purposes of this explanation because we can hear and see then that my uh, retime has been successful. Uh, so the first thing I will do is grab my audio. I know my audio is here. This is my scene. Here is my mov. Uh, I can tell it's 50 frame, 55 frames long and we need to move this 10 frames. Um, I'm going to do that in the sequencer on this layer only. I could retime everything using the sequencer. Uh, I do not recommend that. It is very messy. It's not pipeline friendly. If you did that on a job, you can cause problems later on. And so that's why we're not going to do it with the animation itself. We're going to perform everything manually. But for the purposes of the sound, I'm not an editor. I don't care. So I'm going to move this 10 frames just by click and dragging. And I'm using the arrows here to tell that I've got my new in and out points. I've got that right. So we've changed from 55 to 65. So that's my first job. Now I can see that my WAV form is in the timeline 10 frames later. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to go into a bit of a discovery phase. <laughs> I, I, let's say I animated this way before Christmas. The client notes are late. I can't remember this shot. I'm sorry. What did I do? Oh yeah, I remember now. So I'm just gonna go through and firstly, I'll select my rig. Um, I have a system that I use on every single job, for every single shot. I know what you're thinking. Nobody creative, so ever use the word system. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear formula or system in a creative job. However, this just keeps me fast, keeps me aligned with my work. It keeps me knowing what I've done months and months down the line, I can open up a scene file and I will, I can see exactly that I know who animated this. I animated this. I use red for keyframes. I use orange labels for breakdowns and everything else is considered an in-between. So I can tell that I've got like a keyframe here, a breakdown here. So there's a little bit of drag on the headset. And then I know that they are going to ease into that last frame there. And it looks like there's a little bit of overlap. Yep. So the whole rig is animated. I can see that. What else is animated? If I just drag through, I can see that here where one animation ends, other things are moving. Visually, straight away, my discovery work has found out my wings are moving. So once I start discovering what's moving, I can start choosing those layers to do the retime. Um, I can do this quite simply by selecting everything that I want to move. So here we have a checkbox in the t uh, in the layer window and I can just click this and this means that this will show always in the timeline. Uh, to get to the wing, I can't be asked going through my rig. I mean, I can see it there open, but like, what if I can't be asked? I'm just going to alt right click in my scene. It's going to select the wing. There we go. Wing overlay in wing B. I never would have known that, but it's showing in my timeline now. There is animation on it. There's a lot of animation on it. Great. Wing overlay. So I need that for sure. I'm going to select that box. I'm going to alt right click my other wing. Yep. <laughs> Whole heap of animation again. I can tell that because obviously these are selected. These are red. I just press escape to deselect everything just so that my timeline is as collapsed as possible. It's wing overlay down here. It selects it in my layer file, my layer window. So I'm just going to click that as well. Now I know, just through my eyes and my ears, also there is a bit of animation on the mouth. So I know there must be a switch layer somewhere that I need. 
and that's going to be in the beak. Where could that possibly be? Body, head, beak. There we go, I select beak. There's my beak line, animation, click it. Now then, I'm still discovering. I don't wanna leave anything behind. I don't want to do anything more than once. I just want to do something once. So if I, I know for a fact, now that I'm looking at it, I remember. There's some on the head. Oh, right click, select the head. Where's the head? Yes, here we go. Deselect everything. There's my head. Click my head. Now then, I can tell, still discovering, <laughs> the beard. So if I, oh, right click the beard, the beard, yep. Here we go, this is the beards animation. I'm gonna click that too. Now then, how many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six layers, not too bad. That's probably it. Now if I, um, let me just expand this as much as I can. The, there, is, there is a bit of a pain in the ass going on here and I do need to move everything 10 frames and there is a lot to select. I'm just going to hide my camera. Do you see how here my camera is in my timeline? My keys are here. I don't want to see my camera, but I don't want to delete it. I'm just gonna hide that. I want this as tidy as possible, just so I can make sure I am moving everything all at once. I just want to do something once. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, okay, I think that is everything. So now that I've got my selections in my timeline, I am free to grab and move as I needed. Now we know, don't we, that it needs to be 10 frames. I can grab everything. What bothers me about this is that I haven't got keyframes here and here on the head and the beard. I think that's fine because knowing my system that is red, that will be like a default. That will be a default. I would definitely have keyed that before I started because I like to have a home key. Now with everything selected, I would usually just grab this key here, the very last one on the line. I could grab number one and move that to frame 10, but I know for a fact that if this ends here on 59, it's going to need to end here on 69 to keep my boss happy. So I just click, drag, and slide that over. Now there will be Oh, look at that. I've forgotten something. There must be an overlay. Great, okay. Is it this one? Wing overlay, no. Is it this one? Wing overlay, hello. So I have split this for some reason. Maybe it's because it hides an arm and then doesn't hide an arm. I can't remember my logic. So this is good though, because we found immediately, because everything else selected, we are not expecting something to um, still be moving in the wrong time. So this is great. All I have to do is select that one layer now. I've got a new wing overlay over here. I'm gonna grab all these and move them to 69, 10 frames. And this then will line everything back up. It's always good when something goes wrong. I try to do as much discovery as possible. Hmm. What else is causing that? Look at that. On the wing overlay. Hello, here's a key I forgot to click and drag. Did you spot that? I hope you did, because <laughs> I did not. So here we are, we've got on um, translation and rotate, we do have another key. I'm gonna move that 10 frames. What's that, 29? 39. So with all the will in the world, with as much discovery work as possible, there might be something else that you have forgot. So there we go. It's just about finding that one or that one forgotten thing that I've missed. So now we have a new problem. Uh, it's not a problem, it's expected in that we have, because we've moved our first keyframe, this red one here that is on frame 11 now, on every layer, we now are animating from frame zero. Our frame zero key, which is our build key, is now leading into our animation and we want to stop that. So we need to copy this key for every layer that is animated from here 
to frame one. So if I select my rig, so if I've got multiple, multiple things shown in my timeline, I need to be able to select them uh, manually, singularly, and uh, perform actions. I just click on the name of the layer in the timeline. So on Niddler, I'm gonna select everything there, Control C or Command C and Control V or Command V. I have to do that for everything. And I then have to, I do have to remember <laughs> to definitely click, oops, nope, click on the names to make that the active layer. Otherwise, we normally have to do that over in the um, layer panel, but because we've got everything select, selected in the timeline, Moho gives us this option where we can select the layers here, which I love. Thank you, Moho. So now that should be looking Oh, look at that. Oh, I forgot some eyes. I forgot some eyes. This is good. See? And of course, the overlay wing. A lot happening in this animation. A lot more than it looks like. I'm just going to tidy my timeline up a little bit by getting rid of everything because now the only thing left to solve is the eyes. And the only thing that will display my timeline is what I have selected. So definitely got a bit of an eyebrow here, haven't we? Here we go. Eyebrow animation. And eye. Eyes. Great. And then eyebrow and then eye. So it's just four layers. I'm just going to go through alt right click, find which ones they are visually and then just tick them. So I've got them all in my timeline going to go collect in them. I'm going to hit escape a few times just to deselect everything and make everything as tidy as possible. So now I have my eyebrows and my eyes in my timeline. Again, exactly the same thing. We're going to pull this over 10 frames. However, I'm going to use this as a reason to show you another way of doing it. Uh, this is going to be fairly easy because we're not dealing with too much, not too complicated. We're just moving multiple layers 10 frames over. And I want to show you the push function because I used this all the time on Puffin Rock. It saved my bacon. Here we have um, a symbol where we've got um, uh, push frames left, push frames right with a little key, key symbol and an arrow. And this box here is by how many frames do you want to push it? We know 10 because we've had that feedback note from our boss. So we're going to press 10. Now I want to just tell you something uh, really important about this push tool. So I'm going to get the user manual open. Love a good Moho user manual. Um, <laughs> love a good user manual sesh. So I'm just going to write the word push in here. I can find anything I'm stuck on. And I had to come and do this when I first used this tool because I was like, what is the magic wording I'm missing? I thought you could use push just from the timeline and it would push everything. However, here is... The most critical sentence, I think, on this page. <laughs> Only the visible keyframes currently displayed in the timeline will be affected. So that is, I think it should be in bold. That's really important. We can use push only if this is something that we can actively say is true. So back to Moho. Here's all the things in the timeline. I've got everything selected. I've set this to 10. I am now going to press this button and it's going to push my frames right. Ta-da! Ah, oh, so nice. And we just have to go through and fix it here. Although I am guessing, because I know my system, oh, apart from that little, <laughs> his little eyes there, forgot that one. Um, I'm going to just copy and paste the first frame of each layer back to one, just to make sure whatever decisions I made on this frame when I started my work at this red one are being upheld. Okay, so if I play through that, tell me what to do. Rin, tell me what to do. It's in sync. Rin, tell me what to do. It's expected. Rin, tell me what to do. We've done something two different Rin, ways. Tell me what to do. And I've showed you how Rin, to display multiple to multiple do. layers in your timeline. Rin, tell me what to do. You can you don't have to check these. You can um, control click and it will do the same thing. However, when you unclick, they then disappear. And that bugs me. For the same amount of clicking, 
I can just press these. So I always do it that way. And then everything is in my timeline. Um, and another thing to be wary about is just that you have to make it the active selection as well. Something I wish I knew. So there you go. That's retiming your animation in Moho. I really hope this was helpful. It's something that tripped me up a little bit when I worked on a pipeline. Because quite often, and I mean like very often, you'll be asked to retime something. It's a skill that you definitely need at work. Okay. Uh, great. Bye, everyone. Brin, tell me what to do.